weather is getting uh, considerably more spring-like, which is nice. Um, so uh, today, 10 degrees. Uh, earlier today, it's a bit, uh, it's gone a bit all cloudy uh, up there. Um, it was actually a bit sunnier earlier and it was about 12 degrees, which is quite nice. Um, as you can see, uh, a little bit low on charge. There's a, a little bit of a sliver of red at the bottom, so uh, not out. I would still get quite a few miles out of that. And um, nearly 92 miles uh, out of this charge, which has been uh, mostly around, uh, around town, basically, around the city. So uh, not the most uh, kind of economical driving which uh, usually, uh, my experience, is uh, putering down country roads kind of thing at uh, an average speed. Um, but uh, not too bad. Uh, where are we? Ow. 98 out of 100, not too bad, I suppose. Uh, 4.3, yeah, that's okay. Because uh, uh, some of the... This this will be no over the course of the last kind of five days, I guess. And some days it was still down to two degrees, so pretty cold. So 91.8 miles, 21 kilowatt hours of energy uh, consumed there. Um, so that is that. Uh, don't think there's anything else really I, much to uh, that's going to be telling us. Average speed, you can tell it's all city driving, can't you? Um, and, yeah, otherwise, same old, same old. Uh, not much there. So I will plug in and uh, let the car uh, charge up. Um, but, yes, nice to see uh, kind of up from the sort of 70 miles or so um, when it is cold. So I've actually not uh, been able to drive around. Uh, with the, without the heater on, really, for the last week. Uh, occasionally putting it on, um, but it's been quite bright, so the car just warms up naturally, so that's good. Right, plug in. Plugged in using the uh, Charge Place Scotland um, cards. Uh, this is, I'm not sure I mentioned this, but uh, it's all changed from... Uh, it's the same, basically the same network that Charger Car was, but we now have uh, new cards uh, up here in Scotland, but it works all the same. So I'm plugged in, and we're charging, and four hours, that's quite long, for, I guess, 4%, we're down to, yeah, see, 4%, I could still have got another, oh, at least another 5 miles, 10 miles maybe. Uh, if I'd been really uh, trying out of uh, out of what was there, um, so yeah, that would take it up to nearly 100 miles. That's not too bad. Um, there. Um, is this going to hook in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you only do Enough of that. Um, so I'm now at uh, over um, three years. Uh, with the car and uh, you know every yeah I think it was every year there'd be some kind of update that needs to take place with the R-Link uh, not update as in you know software update but an update as in um, the subscriptions I always find this it is it is confusing um, what you need to get updated so I have actually paid for oh now I paid for something because <laughs> I noticed in the in the bill that there was and I think it was three years of another three years of uh, the li live is it that live st oh, I can't remember now I better go and check this and see but oh, it's so confusing because um, I'm still now you get this up here uh, it tells you there's some messages are waiting and um, one is about the phone book, which uh, always comes up and then always stays up. Now, it didn't used to do this with my old phone, but uh, when I moved to an Android phone, it it stay that it's a bit annoying because whenever it's updated the phone data, it it just stays with that notification saying 
uh, phone data updated. I would just like it just to clear. It's just annoying having that little one message up here. But you see, I've got another lot of notifications. And I keep getting these like every week. Uh, and now this one is about live services. Now, I swear I have... I have increased, I have paid to my subscription for that. So I don't know what is going on uh, with these. Um, so I think I might have to, was it live services, discovery services, expires in 15 days, you see. And uh, digital services. So I did, because I've been getting these messages for a wee while now. So I did go on the whole R-Link Went the store to try and work out what it was that I needed. This would be like two months ago now, and um, I did end up p paying for a subscription for what I thought was all the regular stuff that allows you to do the use the app and you get the text messages and emails and all that kind of stuff because that is actually quite uh, that is quite useful. Uh, to have that uh, have that there and it allows you to do over the app to pre you know to uh, do the car um yeah preheat the car and all that stuff which which is quite handy um so i had paid for that what i thought was that and i thought that was that stuff but i'm still getting a subscription as due so i'm confused uh as to what is going on here because there's also the TomTom Tom live stuff, which is quite handy because that's all the stuff with the, I think it gives you the traffic um, alerts uh, and then will guide you around on the sat nav and all that, which can be quite handy, though it's quite expensive for the uh, to add that on. Um, so I think it was the other stuff that I had done rather than, the, oh, I don't know, maybe it's the TomTom Tom stuff. I'd up to, I need to go back and have a look. But I just thought, I thought it was done. And then I'm starting to get these new messages. So I'm confused uh, by all of that. There you go. Right, we are merrily charging away at 6%. And uh, I need to, it started to rain. I uh, charged up to about nine, uh, to 99%. It must have been close to tipping over to 100. Um, and it was saying, I think it was 94 miles on the, the range gauge. Um, I have subsequently driven across the other side of the city. and uh, But still, still quite a, yeah, 87 miles. It's brought it down. The temperature's come down a bit now. Uh, alas, six degrees. Uh, not just as warm as it, uh, as it was. Um, so... Uh, yeah, a few other things while I'm here. Uh, I've got a bit of time. Uh, now, some of uh, other Renault uh, various uh, uh, owners use one of these things. Uh, this is a Bluetooth uh, OBD. Uh, that is the onboard diagnostics socket, which I have removed uh, the tray from down here so you can see where the socket is. And uh, this thing plugs into it, um, which I have uh, I have shown before. I've got a, there's another video that uh, has a whole bit about this. It is absolutely going to refuse to focus on this, isn't it? Uh, go on camera. Let me force it to try and do it. There it goes. Oops, upside down. Uh, so this one is Conway uh, thing, which was I think it was about a tenner or something like that, and you just plug it in. And it should, by the magic of Bluetooth, connect to uh, the phone, if I get this in the right way. Uh, uh, which is not that way. That's the way. Um, that's it in. Um, I actually have the car not on. Let me power it up. And turn it on here. Yeah, so got kind of power lights on, and but none of these other lights are on. Now I have managed to um, I have managed to get into it. I, I, I was trying it maybe a couple of weeks ago, 
and got in and was able to get some information out of it but all of the regular like when you're driving the the kind of real time information it's just not it's not producing that at all so i don't know what it is if it's the something's gone wrong with it it's the it's it the the dongle thing rather than the phone or the app or anything like that and um, because it, when it the few times i've only used it maybe two or three times when it worked properly um all the lights would light up and there'd be flickering of different lights as data was uh, being transferred backwards and forwards but really nothing uh, like that um so it's a bit of a bummer really because that was uh, some things i'd quite like to have a look and see if it's changed any because it's been well it must be over a year since i've uh since i've tried that uh, so the one thing I noticed, though it did give me, was the uh, state of health and the battery, which I think was 92%, uh, something like that, when I last checked it. Um, so that was when it was still quite cold. So be interesting to see if that goes up a bit in the in the warmer weather or not. Um, we'll see. In fact, I'm just going to see if I can connect it now, uh, see if that'll work. But uh, as I'm recording this on my phone... I'll need to um, stop doing that and then I'll try. So I'm just going to try that. Well, go figure. I should have done a video of this thing before because it actually seemed to be working this time. Um, it uh, was picking up on pedal position, brake, uh, torque request and and all that kind of stuff. So um, I just taken the car off charge, but it was just charging a seven kilowatt. So the uh, average battery temp uh, unit temperature, cell temperature rather, is 16 Celsius. And it was still saying 92% state of health. And then on the, ra uh, on the uh, state of charge, it was saying, let me get this right, usable state of charge, 98%. 0.5% something like that available and then the real state of charge 94.5% so I assume that difference is the difference between because the battery is actually larger than the tw the usable amount the 22 kilowatt hours that's usable it's actually a 26 kilowatt hour battery uh, that accounts for the difference so uh, over these last three years you know uh, there's been some drop-off in that um the that what what is the 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 real uh amount of of charge kind of available um which is kind of figuring the ninety two percent thing anyway um ninety two percent i guess that's not too bad uh after three and a bit years um so if that's kind of so if what i seem to remember from if that does take into account the kind of extra thing from looking at charts uh, of the general kind of pattern of of how a, a battery kind of keeps its charge on multiple cycles uh the the, the initial dip is more and then it kind of uh kind of levels off which is partly a, a, ameliorated by the the way Renault manages it by having a bigger battery initially um so i so if if the rate is you know more or less the same uh over the next few years then i guess when, by the time you get round to was it Renault say on the lease 75 percent uh, and then they would well you're talking about another you know like another five six years away kind of thing for that to uh that to happen so then you're nine years um nine ten years i mean that's not bad is it uh if things continue on the same way which i guess that's kind of what i thought it would be uh but there we go um on other news there's been uh a, a lot I, I wish i brought my gopro with me because i've got an hour an hour to kill here in the car i'm not going to rab it on for that long um uh, but i'm having to hold my phone up with between my fingers uh to do this um yes um i've still not yet had a chance to try one of the new zoe's the 41 uh kilowatt hour batteries uh so 
last time I was in the dealer, they didn't have any in, so I must go do another run past. And then the other cars wanted to try the the Hyundai Ionic. Um, I must go back to the dealer there too because they thought they might get an electric one in, kind of a bit later into the into 2017. So it'd be interesting to see if they've got one there and take that for a wee spin. Um, though the more the more I think about the, like, it's a real shame because, well, just as uh, maybe in a year or two's time when we've got kids that are gonna are maybe leaving home. Uh, this car would be an ideal car for them to take because the running costs are so low um, as a kind of first car. And then I'd be looking for something else, I guess, in another year or two. Um, it would be... Oh, man, I, I really do like the kind of the layout, the size and all of that of the Hyundai Ionic. Um, but it's just the battery, the size of the battery, uh, that it is considerably smaller than the new Renault uh, Zoe battery is a surprise. I saw something just um, last week or earlier in the week from um, I, I think one of the PR folks from Hyundai or some, something like that saying that they are already looking and have plans maybe a, in another year or the, the end of 2017 into 18 of um, a version that has a 200 mile a proper 200 mile range so i guess they'd be looking at battery capacity up in the 30s heading towards 40 kilowatt hours now that would that would then make it uh very appealing indeed at the moment oh, i just feel like oh, it'd be a hard decision to make between that and another zoe with the bigger battery that and uh it's quite expensive so there's always that as well uh in things anyway uh here with this car uh since it was away and had its little respite for seven weeks or whenever it was when they changed the or the charging part of the kind of motor block um uh, engine block thing um it's been fine not had any problems at all and um i had one issue connecting to a rapid charger in Forfa, um which is a charger i used to use a lot but i haven't uh, i haven't used it much in a while because it suddenly has become it used to charge at a full 43 kilowatts and it does not any longer which is really frustrating because it's one that you would use on a longer run um but i was waiting for somebody at that charger and decided to just um, get 10 minutes of charge, uh, 15 minutes of charge while I was waiting for them to turn up. And um, it was, it took about three, four attempts to get it to connect. And uh, each time it would come up, the, the, the light at the nose at the charging socket would start flashing red. And then, but on the, I can't remember if the dash went red as well. The dash may have gone red as well, but it didn't come up with the message saying um, charging, or oh, whatever it is, charging impossible, battery charge impossible, whatever that message is that is the one that you're like, ooh. Um, it just, I think the screen just kind of went red, kind of flashing, you know, uh, fading in and out in the background, but it was still saying ongoing checks. Um so I just unplugged and plugged it back in again and did that a few times and then it started charging at a slower, this slower rate, but it did start charging uh, a little bit. Um, so that was, uh, that was the only thing. And I think that's to do with the charger there rather than the car. I've not had any problems with the other chargers and the other kind of rapid chargers up here. I tend to use so uh here's hoping uh that is all fine and uh no problems with that so that in fact that day uh it was cold it was about two degrees one degree two degrees something like that and uh and so i'd driven down just as, kind of assuming i'd get a 10 minute top up and when i got down to that charger 
in fact, I've got that wrong. I got a wee top up at it when I was on my way home because when on the way down there, uh, there was another Zoe using it. And um, because I was only going to be there for 15 minutes or so, um, and I think it don't, that other Zoe had only just started charging, I was stuck. There are two 7 kilowatt, there's a, um, a post for 7 kilowatt chargers there, and those ones I can, I've never been able to connect to and get a charge. Um, they are the, oh flip, what's the name of them? Oh, well, that'll come back to me. But they are notoriously, don't work with uh, Zoe's, it must be an earthing, it's an RCD issue or something. Um, and I think almost everywhere I've tried charging at one of those, it doesn't work. Um, hopeless. Man, it is on the tip of my tongue. Uh, Electro Bay. Boom, that's it. Electro Bay ones. Um, so, so I didn't get a charge. It was really cold. It had about 82 miles to go, something like that. And uh, most of it on uh, fast dual carriageway. So I had been fairly careful uh, driving down, but of course I'd thought I would get a wee top up charge. So um, and I'd used so I'd used more than I anticipated. I was down to um, about twenty five percent on the battery, just sort of two of the uh, uh, two of the blocks on the on the battery here. Um, there are eight here, and there were two kind of full left, and that was it. And I think it was saying a, a range of about 19 miles or something it was estimating. Um, and <laughs> and we had 29 miles to go. And uh, so if I'd been sensible, I would have gone via Dundee and used the rapid charger there for 10 minutes. But as soon as this other person got in the car, uh, we started blethering. And then I just started, I just started driving my normal route. And it was only when I was a few miles into it, I was like, oh, crap, I should have gone the other way. <laughs> so anyway, um, it was quite an exciting wee drive all across country, um, about, you know, 20, 28, 29 miles, something like that. And um, so driving very carefully um, with a, a real uh, eco mind uh, in, in what I was doing. Uh, no brakes at all, uh, try not to regen, all just coasting and gentle power. And um, the, the, the one thing that I kept in mind is that going down into Perth, when you get near to Perth, it's downhill for quite a few miles. Uh, you're generally going downhill. So I knew that I had that coming. Uh, however, uh, we went down to the, you know, the, the yellow came on, the warning, and then the red warning came on, and we still had like 12 miles to go or something like that. Uh, so with still about seven, eight miles to go, I think it was, would it have been as much as that? It may even have been, well, I think it may, may have been 10 miles. Uh, I, you know, the dashes came up on the, on the the range meter here so it didn't tell you it didn't give you anything any longer it was just the the three dashes and um and so i was i must admit uh, i was getting a little bit well, just a little bit concerned and really because of the temperature because it was so cold uh um but we made it um we got there the 82 miles and um plugged in and of course it was at zero percent uh, on the battery and the car started greedily uh, gobbling so i i was I, I was probably more nervous than i've been in uh, in other times and and most of that was because i had somebody with me uh, uh and they were they were they were getting uh, they were having fun with it but uh, a little bit anxious as well uh, especially when I talked about the need to push the car and <laughs> all that sort of stuff. Uh, however, good old Zoe didn't let me down. Uh, we got there with some careful driving for the last, uh, very careful driving for the last 10 miles or so. Um, and uh, so there you go. Um, that was one of the, you know, one of the very early videos when I tested to destruction I uh, ran the car empty uh, just to see what would happen. So I kind of, I knew there would be a bit of 
a bit more there uh, than the and in fact I should say the limited performance thing uh, came up probably with about five or six miles still to go uh, so there was still quite a bit there and uh, um, it got us there fine so that was good <laughs> but maybe not one to recommend when you've got other people in the car <laughs> However, wasn't planned. I got home no problems at all uh, and got a wee sort of 15 minute charge at that charger and then was able to blatter up the motorway at 65, 70 miles an hour. Uh, no problems. Uh, so, yes, there we are. Um, otherwise, I don't think there's really um, much else as far as my car goes. Uh, everything's been been fine. definitely getting warmer which is nice uh, however nearly the end of March so you'd hope so wouldn't you and um, it is well, reversing camera just sorting itself out 12 degrees outside which is good um, I had just charged the car uh, this morning um, using our workplace charger and uh, reset it uh, on the uh, not reset uh, using the pedals down door open reset but just uh, holding down the um, the button on the end of the the wiper stalk and I have 80 miles on the the range it's not bad because that's so generally that been kind of resetting to 72 ish 74 something like that um, so that is telling me the batteries are definitely uh, liking a little bit of warmer weather uh, which is good I had a um, I kind of ran a charge uh, I think I might have already done a wee video about this, um, which I haven't uh, edited yet, uh, put up. Um, when, uh, which I was uh, getting kind of 90 odd miles on the 90, uh, probably 94 or something like that. Um, and that was with uh, uh, weather from kind of three, four, two, three, four degrees up to kind of 10, 11 degrees. So yeah, not too bad. Um, the car is fine, um, not had any other issues thankfully since it was in the, um, in the, ga in the garage um, at the end of the year uh, into January, uh, it's been uh, fine since. Uh, I was at the um, Hyundai dealer yesterday. Um, but still no electric ionic uh, around to, to have a have a look at so that was uh, yeah that was a bit disappointing I was uh, hoping to I was, I was there with a friend uh, really looking for cars for them uh, something appropriate for them but I also was kind of wanted to see if they had electric version in but no sign of it as yet uh, so yeah that still has to wait to try that out and uh, there's been quite a lot of chatter um, about the battery replacement so there's more information coming out now about switching the battery uh, in older versions of the Zoe uh, for the new 41 kilowatt hour battery pack which is something I would be interested in um, I think it's it's not a straightforward decision it's not a just complete no-brainer oh yeah I totally would do that because you have to pay quite a bit so uh, I'm on a battery lease and that battery lease actually has just started a new contract three another three-year 
term, I assume. Uh, I think I have to get the paperwork through, which I have kind of, kind of briefly looked through, um, and it would mean for I think it's a uh, it would mean paying a kind of lump sum up front uh, of round about uh, three thousand pounds or so. Uh, and then paying an extra ten pounds a month uh, on the lease. So, if I was doing a long commute and stuff like that, I think I would be much more interested in it. So it's a, it's a bit of a hard, it's a bit of a tough one for uh, for my position where. Most of the time we're driving the car just around the city, so it really the the range issue is a complete non-issue. Um, the only times it would be useful are the occasional times going down, you know, for a longer a longer drive. But even then, I'm kind of a bit torn because, well, I guess it would give you more f it would give you more flexibility having the greater range, clearly. Uh, which would be which would be nice definitely but you've still you've still got to charge you know um, I mean the only thing is like for my kind of regular longer runs are journeys down to Perth which is around about 82 miles or something like that and so I can do it in in one charge with with this car as it is though it can be quite tight depending on speed and weather uh, so it would make it completely wouldn't have to worry about it at all um, you could cruise down at 70 miles an hour and, and all the rest um, which would be you know I mean there's, there's something to be said for that um, uh, or going down to Glasgow but I, uh, I think maybe even going down to Glasgow you might want to just get a wee top up on the way if you were going 70 kind of 70 all the way or you would you know be driving a little bit slower then I'm sure you'd get down fine in, in one charge so yeah it, it definitely would be nice for that but I don't you know that's only maybe once a month kind of thing so it's not that frequent and you know, stopping once for a, a rapid charge for half an hour. It's not exactly the end of the world, is it? So, um, yeah. Uh, I, so, so yeah, it's quite a lot of money, you know, to add on. Now, it, I think it'd be different if you were just buying a car outright. So, if I was replacing this car, um, maybe in a couple of years or three or four years or whatever or the, or you know handing this car on uh, to family or something like that then I think you would it would almost be a no-brainer to to have a longer range car you know you would, that's just the way but the, but the economics for uh, switching the battery out oh, just not quite sure, though there's definitely a part of me that would just like to do it just for the sake of of doing it to see what it's like <laughs> and all of that. However, that's quite exper uh, quite an expensive little experiment just for the hell of it uh, to try <laughs> to try out. So, um, not sure the budget can can hold on to that one. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, mm, I'm still uh, still toying with that one, and it's not happening at the moment. I've not heard of anyone that's actually done it yet. So I think it, 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 this is still kind of these numbers are starting to filter out and some kind of leaking out and official officially, but I, yeah, I've not heard of anyone that's actually had the battery change. So it will be interesting to uh, read the experiences and, and that, yes. And so uh, another thing that is strange and I do wonder if it's somewhat temperature related I don't know uh, but some folks that have taken delivery of their new uh, Q90 
Zoe's. So the Q standing for um, the quick charge. So it has basically the same motor and as this car does, um, which allows it, it, which allows 43 uh, receiving the full 43 kilowatts from a charger. Except it isn't. So in some experiments that these folks have done, they're finding they're getting kind of 33, 34-ish uh, kilowatts. Now that's, uh, you know, that's 50% better than 22 uh, kilowatts. So that's, uh, it, you know, it does save you quite a bit of time, but oh, you'd expect to be getting 40 odd uh, kilowatts of power into the car if you are using, if you're using that, especially if you're having a charge you know, battery that's almost double the size, then you, to be actually charging a, a bit of a slower rate, that really seems like a backward step. So I don't know what that's all about. That seems really bizarre. Um, so that's another reason for uh, just hanging fire, because if you were on a longer journey where you did need a charge, but then you were charging slower, I don't know it would seem like it, it it really wouldn't make much difference to your actual total journey time so yeah you might end up having to uh, stop twice in this car um, but you know the different the overall difference in time might only be 10 minutes or something you know I don't know it that, that seems a bit a bit weird to me and that kind of yeah definitely puts me off a little bit uh, at the moment so it'll be interesting to see uh, if folks because I certainly know in this car uh, over the winter if if the battery is not fully up to uh, you know if you haven't been driving a while and you plug it into a rapid you are you are you probably are charging around about that mid high 20s 30 ish uh, kilowatts um, and sometimes that ramps up a little bit as the, as the battery warms up during the charging but it certainly isn't charging at the full full rate that say if the batteries are over 20 degrees um, that kind of thing uh, so yeah we'll see we'll see what happens there um, one one to keep an eye on um, yes I'm escaping um, to the cinema down to the beach uh, to the cinema to watch a movie I just uh, picked something I have an unlimited card for Cine World so I just picked uh, something to escape to and it is the film Life uh, so I'm just gonna park up uh, I've got a few minutes before it starts uh, yes we'll stop weird it's definitely a weird one um, yeah, so uh, the other thing that's kind of putting me off is, um, and this is an interesting one now, I'd be interested in what others who are, have got all kind of uh, electric, have got all electric, is when if you've got kids who are getting to the stage of learning to drive, as I do have a 17 year old in the house now with provisional license who's been very patient uh, while well, I've been faffing around thinking what to do, but of course uh, the Zoe would be, an, I mean, an ideal learner car in many ways because the the power del delivery is so smooth and all that kind of thing. Um, but it is, it would be classed as an automatic, so then you only get an automatic license. And as I found going around with a friend who only has an automatic license to look for some smaller cars, whoa, it is hard finding small cars. Uh, with automatic gearboxes and they do tend to be you know quite a bit more inefficient uh, as far as your uh, grams per kilometer and all that goes uh, so there's that um, then uh, yes yeah, so I've been looking at uh, getting another car because that's what we need and our other car is an automatic too and would cost the, and the earth to insure on no doubt uh, so we may end up with three cars in the household, um, one manual, um, petrol, I've been looking at Citroen C1, that kind of thing, uh, as really cheap to run, um, either zero, you know, they're under 100 grams per kilometre or just 20 quid. Uh, 
That being said, our, the big Citroen, seven seater Citroen is only 20 quid per year for the road tax. That's amazing uh, how they how they got that down. Um, yeah, so there is, uh, so there's that. Uh, so some expense that might have gone on uh, a new battery pack may go on uh, buying another car and the insurance for it, which is not cheap. Uh, when you've got a 17 year old with a provisional license going on yeah so what do you what do we do and, and this so there's part of me like because uh, uh, she was like oh well an automatic would be fine automatic license and uh, there's part of me thinking yeah it probably would be fine because in five years time um, we, you know it, with the electric cars much more available ah, maybe cl the clutch is on the way out um, so so that may be that actually may be the case but it isn't just at the moment so it probably uh, a manual for learning on and practicing on mostly uh, is going to be important there we are it's a complicated world isn't it uh, that we <laughs> that we live in right i'm off to the cinema There was an update uh, for the R-Link on, um, which is resetting, uh, on the R-Link site. So um, I've just, uh, I'm waiting for one of the kids in guitar lessons, so uh, good time. While the, I'm just waiting anyway in the car um, to let it do its, th its thing for updating. So, uh, uh, not very exciting at the moment, is it? Just uh, obviously booting up. Um, so it, it's uh, clearly um, like a whole system update. That's um, I think probably maybe that's the third time I've seen it where it's the kind of processor software stuff is being updated as well. Um, but oh, you don't usually see many changes to it. Uh, it's just uh, oh, it just went through the splash screen and uh, see if it comes up this time. It's obviously rebooting again. Uh, setting time, here we go. And uh, sound, we will mute. Uh, it's doing its thing and will blow me down. It looks exactly the same. Oh, it's doing another cycle through. There we go, update successful. Well, how exciting is that? It ain't good enough. Um, it's always much more exciting when you have an update and, uh, you know, it looks different. Everything's changed. Though, <laughs> I realise when you've got manuals written and all that sort of stuff, you can't really do that. You've got to make sure it all looks kind of the same uh, for folks who are not uh, as uh, techie literate as other people are um, so yeah I might have a wee play see if I notice anything in any different since I'm sitting in the car anyway um, the maps it's just uh, uh, installing those making sure they're all set and uh, yep yeah, that all looks exactly the same well we'll see oh it does have the Notice that, that that is indeed there is a charging point. There's a multi-story car park here, so that is correct. There is a charging point there. Uh, that's something. Uh, right. I'll maybe have a wee fiddle around and see if I notice anything different uh, with this update. Well, I've had a, a, a kind of a flick through different pages on the uh, R Link and. Uh, don't see much that's different has to be said the only thing I see that's different I think uh, is on the sat nav uh, when you're on this uh, on the kind of home view where you've got you can have multiple different screens um, you always had the kind of traffic monitor and the next direction you were going in but this I think is new which is your 
time uh, ETA and your distance to go uh, on the whole journey. That is new, I think. Uh, the rest, everything else looks kind of the same. Don't notice any, any other differences anywhere. And of course, when you bring up the whole thing, then it just kind of appears. Uh, that's just the way it was, as far as I remember. Uh, oh, that might be, that might be new, having the sound thing there. After 18 yards, yeah. turn right, then okay. turn oh, right. Okay, oh, alright. Now I've, oh, now I'm all over the place. After 18 yards, turn right, then turn right. Sound is on, but instructions are still off. Right. Not quite, I, I normally have my sat nav with the instructions, the sound off, because uh, I don't like it interrupting whatever else. Because I'm, I'm usually listening to uh, podcasts or audiobook or something like that, so I don't like having uh, having it interrupted all the time. I just follow the instructions on the screen. Um, yeah, I don't remember seeing that though, so that might be new. Uh, otherwise, everything else looks uh, pretty much the same. Um, yeah. Uh, oh no, I didn't mean to do that. I like having that on automatic. Uh, yeah. Maybe they've made a few enhancements as far as uh, stability goes and all that kind of thing. There must be. I don't have any problems. It very rarely, if ever, reboots on its own. It's pretty stable. Um, yeah. Anyway, another update uh, goes by. Like my TomTom Tom Live, I just was noticed as I was flicking around. Uh, yesterday, in fact, uh, the subscription ended. I think in one of my previous videos, so I, I need to think about whether I resubscribe to that again, it does the traffic. So, uh, I'm not quite sure I need... Uh, it was quite expensive. Don't know. My, uh, I'll swither over whether I do it again. Uh, maybe wait until I've got a longer journey where it might actually be quite handy and then I'll up, update it. Um, I did finally get to the bottom of the uh, faffing around I had with different messages coming up about things that hadn't, you know, subscriptions that hadn't, uh, uh, were coming to an end and all that sort of stuff. But I had to call, I did actually speak to somebody at the R-Link customer services to work out what was going on. Um, so having, and it was all to do with, I'm trying to remember now. I had to put in, uh, there was a code uh, that I had to put in in order to make this thing go live. And um, I I think, I don't know, I think my email system must have filtered out the email that came through with the code. Well, I did have the email saying I'd put the order in and all that stuff. Um, anyway, they found the code. I was able to put it in. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. It was, um, I was finding that on the, uh, on my phone, I, the phone was okay. It would get the text messages through and I could check the charging, uh, you know, status and all that on my phone. But when I went on the website, it wouldn't. There was no connection and it said that uh, uh, this, the services had uh, lapsed and all that sort of stuff. So um, it was that that I kind of got sorted. So now I can access it all and monitor from the computer what the car is doing and ask it to preheat and all that sort of stuff um, again so that's good um, yeah so that seems to be all working fine uh, yeah otherwise everything's just tickety-boo it's all just chuntering on uh, still uh, a bit warmer weather in fact it was a gorgeous day today I think we we're up to about 15 degrees I, I got in the car and it said 18 uh, this afternoon, but the car had been sitting in the sun, so that doesn't really count. Uh, eight degrees at seven o'clock at night. Uh, my average is four miles per kilowatt hour uh, over this kind of half a charge. So, um, yes, it looks like I've got about 48% or something left, and I've done 50 miles, 49 and a half miles using 12 kilowatt hours. Um, so, not bad.